Welcome back. Welcome back. You made Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K Show on fire-tv.com. A lot of things going on. We're going to talk about uh, this t- two-tier justice system, right? Uh, Donald Trump says that it is, it is a, uh, a a two-tier justice system, uh, one where, uh, you know, Democrat. I guess, I guess he says Democrats get treated differently in some kind of way. Um, I'm going to talk about that, this uh, uh, Trump trial, one of many, one of several trials. Uh, Judge Juan Machon has found former President Trump in contempt for violating the gag order in this, uh, you know, hush money trial for the 10th time, 10 times. He has violated the gag order. Yeah, now the gag order prevents you from speaking about jurors and uh, witnesses and uh, and the such. Now you or me, just one violation of the gag order, and uh, we're in trouble. Donald Trump. This is time number ten. And the judge finally says, I, I don't want to put you in jail. But uh, he's considering. He, he didn't even say, I'm going to put you in jail. He says, I don't want to put you in jail. Please don't make me do it. He said, the judge says, the last thing I want to do is put you in jail. Wait, black people, y'all can relate to Donald Trump? Donald Trump said y'all can relate to him. Donald Trump said y'all can relate to him. The judge says to the defendant, I don't want, the last thing I want to do is put you in jail. Well, uh, after the 10th violation of the gag order, he says he's going to consider jail time for Donald Trump. Uh, I'm going to consider it. Judge Marshawn said yesterday, going forward, this court will have to consider a jail sanction. Ooh, tough talk from the judge. Look, Donald Trump, he he, he got y'all thinking he wants to go to jail. He's he, Y'all think, oh, if Donald Trump goes to jail, that's going to make him a martyr. Listen, Donald Trump doesn't want to go to jail, and Donald Trump ain't going to jail. He doesn't want to go to jail. He's, he's going to act like it. You know why? Because he knows that they're not going to put him in jail. He knows they're not going to put him in jail. That's why he's, he's, nah, 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 nah. He, he's tempting them, but they ain't going to do it. You know why? Uh, because many people in this country have this romantic relationship with the imagery of things. The imagery. So the imagery of their former president being in jail, even though he committed crimes. Now, he's not been found guilty. But he's committed crimes before the the trial's even over. As I said, you or me. Violate the gag order one time. We won't get a fine, maybe. Maybe. If they don't throw us in jail. But 10 times? Come on now. Nobody's going to survive 10 times. And then the judge says, I'm going to consider putting you in jail. No, no. Uh, It it is totally different for Trump. And Trump knows that America is not putting him in jail. It doesn't matter what he does. He He can walk down to the White House, smack Joe Biden in the face, smack his wife in the face, smack the dog, and he ain't going to jail. Secret Service gonna be they're gonna be confused. I don't know what to do. I, you know what I mean? It, they're not putting Trump in jail. Doesn't matter what he does. The results of these trials don't even matter because he's not going to jail. They're gonna fine him an amount of money, and if he doesn't have the money, they're gonna let him borrow from somebody else. Yeah, they don't have the money, borrow from somebody else. It, there, there's no consequences. There's no repercussions for Donald Trump. I don't I don't understand it. Never seen anything like it before ever in my life. I never even heard about anything like this. Right? Richard Nixon, we've often studied Richard Nixon. I have. Okay. Not, maybe not everybody. 
Richard Nixon resigned because he felt the hot breath of Lady Justice on the back of his neck. So he stepped down and his and his uh <laughs> his vice president became president and he's and he said, look, I, I look the the long nightmare is over. I you know this guy can't go to jail and uh you know that happened because they knew Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, former presidents knew that a president could be <laughs> charged. So he pardoned them. I don't know if y'all remember in the 1990s. I think the lady was Linda Tripp that sued one of those ladies sued. Maybe it wasn't Linda Tripp. Sued Bill Clinton. Sued Bill Clinton. And there was this whole big thing about someone suing the president while he's in office. And, you know, it, it was uh, uh, at the time, it, it was a big deal. Now, this is how the whole Monica Lewinsky thing comes about. Right. Bill Clinton was in office. Republicans were mad. You know, you talk about a witch hunt. Talk about a witch hunt. Paula Jones, Paula Jones. Paula Jones sued President Bill Clinton while he was in office. She alleged that while he was an, or, or while she was an Arkansas state employee, she suffered severe sexual advances from the then Arkansas governor, Bill Clinton. So while he was president, it was this whole big thing. Like, can the president be sued? Blah, blah, blah. Now, if you're of a certain age, you don't remember or, or you weren't paying attention to politics at the time. What do you think Republicans said at that time about the president? Do you think that the president, uh, according to Republicans, could be sued? Oh, yes. You know, they were happy about that. They were happy about that. Uh, impeachment. They felt totally different about impeachment when it was Bill Clinton. Totally different about impeachment when it's Bill Clinton. Now, Judge Mershon says, Mr. Trump, it's important you understand the last thing I want to do is put you in jail. The judge says the last thing I want to do is put you in jail. You are the former president of the United States and possibly the next president as well. The judge said yesterday. Trump is just eating this up, right? They, they, it's like they're not going to do anything, and and he's calling their bluff, calling their bluff. Now, if you want to talk about something that people can uh, uh, relate to, it's not his interactions with the police, but people people do uh, like somebody calling somebody's bluff and they don't do nothing, right? Um. The magnitude of this decision is not lost on me, but at the end of the day, I have a job to do, the judge said. He's, the judge is so sad. Judge Warren Rashad is so sad that he might have to put Trump in jail. What he has done, the judge, is he's backed himself in a corner. He's drawn a line in the sand. So now the next couple times, if Trump continues to violate the gag order and the judge doesn't do anything, Oh, he looks like a, what does he look like? What is it? Paper tiger? He looks like he's all talk and no action. All joke, all choke. <laughs> but listen, he's going to find a way around it. The judge ain't putting Trump in jail. He ain't going to do it. He ain't going to do it. Marshawn fined Trump $1,000 for the violation that he did the, uh, yesterday and ordered that he pay the fines by the close of business on Friday. Last week, the judge fined Trump $9,000 for nine previous violations of the gag order. Ooh, this, this judge is tough. Trump really lucked up with the judge picks. I mean, you know, Democrats, it's Democrats' faults. I'll say that. What, why? Why am I saying that? Here, here's why. In Florida. Hear me out. Donald Trump 
is before a judge that he appointed to the bench. You can't make this stuff up. If I was writing this on a script and I wrote this out, my team would say, that's oh, not believable. That would never happen. But here it is happening. Here it is happening. Now we talk about recusals. We talk about conflicts of interest. I mean, are they even whispering this is a conflict of interest? The judge that Trump is sitting before in Florida, he appointed on his way out the door. And if this judge, <laughs> this judge in New York is bending over backwards for Donald Trump, what do you think she's doing in Florida? Two tiers of justice. <laughs> This the the tier that Trump is on is a third tier. This is a, this is a, a whole different tier from anybody. From anybody, violations of a gag order are punishable by a fine of up to one thousand dollars. Ooh, now there's jail time could be of you know, up to thirty days or both. The judge is petrified. The judge is scared to do anything. The judge is scared. If the judge is scared, <laughs> what are the witnesses? <laughs> what is the jury? The jury is like, they, they over there shaking? It's not that they got the air up in there. It, the jury is scared. They're so, it's, they're so scared that they're making it cold. They're shivering. They're scared. Everybody is scared. Everybody's shook. And I don't even understand why. Because he's going to, you find him guilty, he's not going to, I mean, there's not going to be any repercussions. This is just a, this is just an exercise in entertainment value for people. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you think that Donald Trump is going to jail, please, I want to hear from you uh, on social media at the Diamond K Show uh, on, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. On this topic, the judge finds Donald Trump in contempt for time number 10. No jail. You talk about smacks on the wrist. He's been fined, what, $10,000? And on top of that, he's not even paying it. The, the, the MAGA supporters are paying the money. This is the man who stood up in 2015 and said that he was going to fund his own campaign he hasn't reached in his pocket for nothing since 2015. Nothing. I'm just saying. It's all good, though. That's If y'all like it, I love it. Y'all like it, I love it. DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. So we're talking about this case, and it has been interesting. It, is, it has been interesting. Uh, let me say this. If... President, former President Obama, violated <laughs> violated the gag order, was attacking the judge and his daughter, all this kind of stuff. Man, they would have had my man Barack in jail quick, fast, in a hurry. Don't worry. My vision ain't blurry. He would have been in jail quick. If he had appointed the judge that he was standing before in one of his four cases, oh, Republicans would have complained and talked about recusal. If he had sent something to the Supreme Court, talking about Barack Obama, if he had sent something to the Supreme Court and one of the, the, the justices' wife was, you know, on the plane with him, talking Paging him and all that kind of stuff, hitting up his 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 uh uh I said paging him, hitting up his text message and all that. Oh, Republicans would have been having a fit about it, and they should have. Democrats should be saying more, but they're not. Why? Because they're weak. I mean, this ain't nothing new. This ain't nothing new. We already know this. We already know all this stuff. We already know all this stuff. It's happening, and. Nobody's saying nothing. The Democrats. I mean, the Republicans are not going to say anything. And the, the, the evangelicals, 
The ones that say Trump is sent by God and blah, 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 blah. The ones who I heard when I was a kid talking about Clinton and how bad Bill Clinton is, was. And listen, Bill Clinton was foul. Okay. Bill Clinton was foul. I don't know if somebody need to remind him that he was a married, is a married man. Right. He ain't the only one though. JFK was living foul with regards to women, womanizing, sexual harassment, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not saying that anybody's above it. But if you're going to come out there and, 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 and talk all of that stuff about those guys, and then you get Donald Trump, who is also slimy with regards to women and treating of his wife and all that kind of good stuff. I mean, you know, <laughs> today, Stormy Daniels testifies. We have, we have a, a former president on trial in a case that a porn star testifies about what allegedly happened between her and the president. This is like a scandal or a, a, what, what's the what's the show? That Tyler Perry does. What's the TV show? What's the show? You know the show. With the president in the White House. That one. It's like something like that. But this is real life. This is the 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 candidate. This is the Republican candidate for 2024. So the jurors were really hanging on hanging on their the edge of their seats as uh Stormy Daniels testified the testimony was at times graphic i mean needless to say i don't i don't think that that is uh any surprise right so daniels testifies and you know that the Trump team was worried. Of course, he denies everything that she said. I mean, why, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? He denies everything that, that, that she says. Now, can you believe everything that this porn star has said? I don't know. But a lot of it can be backed up by the facts. We've been hearing about this case for years. We've been hearing about this case for years, and it is finally coming to play. It's finally coming to play. Stormy Daniels testifies in this hush money trial. Now, it, there was you know some kind of back and forth as to whether or not she was going to actually take the stand. She detailed a salacious <laughs> a salacious uh account this adult film actress testified about former president trying to buy her silence after their alleged sexual encounter now i i've i've heard a lot of women lie over the years i have i don't think this lady lying though I don't think this lady's lying. She said that Donald Trump greeted greeted this adult film actress, Stormy Daniels, in silky pajamas at his penthouse suite in a Lake Tahoe hotel in 2006. She told jurors today. So the events that we're talking about the alleged encounter is from years ago, from years ago. Why are we talking about it now? Because in his infinite wisdom and in the infinite wisdom of his team, Donald Trump thought that this encounter was not uh, something that he wanted brought out, especially in the wake of that. Uh, tape that leaked about him talking about grabbing women by the genitals. 
After that tape leaked, they tried to keep this really on the hush. So there was some scheme that they came up with. And because they mishandled it, because they tried to cover it up, it's usually not the crime or the action. It's the cover-up that gets folks jammed. It's usually the cover-up. It's usually the cover-up, and that's what got Nixon. That's what got a lot of folks. Now, now the evangelicals, I don't... Are y'all so paying attention to evangelicals? The evangelical community, these, these Bible thumpers, they hate Stormy Daniels, but they love Donald Trump. Hate Stormy Daniels. But love Donald Trump. It's kind of interesting. So Stormy Daniels, this adult film actress you, you like your 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 presidents that hang out with porn stars is he a rapper or is he or is he a president uh, or a politician i don't know what he is i don't know what he is but uh one thing he is not is going to jail he is not going to jail you ain't gotta worry about that trump supporters you ain't gotta worry about that he ain't going to jail but um Stormy Daniels is is not the the type of individual that you would expect to have stories about your pick for the president. You talk about respect for America around the country and around the world. But Donald Trump is the Donald Trump is the face of that? Like, you think that Donald Trump would bring respect to the country? A second second run at it. Very interesting. The adult film star Stormy Daniels says that she was paid $130,000 before the 2016 election to stay quiet about an alleged affair with the former president. 130,000. Now, some of you may think that that's not a lot of money, but it's not really about that. It's not really about that. So the hush money trial resumes today, Manhattan criminal court. The, uh, the room looks crazy. It looks old. It looks dingy. It is not something that is a good representation. Right? At least if he's going to be a criminal, be, be a criminal that's it. Like, he looks like a slimy criminal. So the hush money trial resumes. Stormy Daniels called to testify about this encounter with Donald Trump. Counter happens allegedly in 2006. 2006. So on the day before, on Monday, the court heard testimony from the Trump Organization accountants about Trump's payments to his uh, attorney and fixer, Michael Cohen, who facilitated this $130,000 deal with Stormy Daniels. Judge Warmashan also, as we said, found Trump in contempt, fined him another $1,000 for violating the gag order. Trump is facing 34 felonies for false falsifying business records to conceal the payments to Stormy Daniels. And Stormy Daniels gets on the stand. The prosecution called Stormy Daniels to the witness stand to recount her claim of having sex with Donald Trump in 2006 at a celebrity golf tournament that took place in Lake Tahoe. She also testified about her efforts to try to sell her story of the affair and being paid $130,000 by Michael Cohen to keep it quiet. So 
Did she try to set him up? She wanted to sell the story. So that is not a surprise that happens all the time to celebrities. And my thing is, is that to show you how Trump just makes these big errors in judgment. The way that Trump's rolled things out, the way that his minions support him, Stormy Daniels affair coming out, so what? It wouldn't have made no difference. He didn't have to pay her no money. He has all these so-called smart people around him and on payroll, right? My thing is, is that let's go back to 2016. If the affair had come out, Hillary still would have lost the way that the cards were laid out at that point in time. Hillary lost for a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons had to do with her own self and the way she carried things. Hillary took for granted a lot of uh, uh, things were just going to go her way. Because in politics, a lot of times they feel like I I played my part. I I did what I was supposed to do. Now it's my turn. And Hillary thought it was her turn. So arrogance had a lot to do with Hillary losing. Arrogance had a lot to do with that. What I'm saying is this. Michael Cohen and all the other lawyers that Donald Trump had on his payroll. I could have given him this advice for way cheaper than what he paid them. Who cares? The, the, the fan base, the MAGA folks would not have cared one iota about the Stormy Daniels stuff. There were a lot of women that said stuff about Trump. He could have just denied it. He could have said, I didn't do it, right? He could have said he didn't do it easy so why did he pay her this hundred thirty thousand dollars i i don't know and then paid it a hundred thirty thousand dollars you go through all this stuff paying paying back michael cohen thirty five thousand dollars over the course of a year it wouldn't have stopped it would if the, if the affair she comes out sells a book says whatever she wants to say okay i don't know i it's, it, it's just so strange to me it's so strange These other cases are not going to go to trial before the election. This is the only one that's going to get there. And the fact that the former president, the only case that comes up is this case. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of muddy. It's kind of muddy uh, the way that it is. But that's how it is. These other, quote unquote, more serious cases, less salacious but more serious cases are not going to come um, before the election. So I don't get it. He goes through all of this to hide something that if it came out, it wouldn't have made a difference in the first place. Sword details. He had sword details. This is the Republican nominee for president of the United States that is in trial in a dingy court in Manhattan and a porn star is testifying about her encounter with him. She said that I had my clothes and my shoes off. I removed my bra. We were in missionary position. Daniels testifies about having sex with Donald Trump. Do, do, do you remember that this guy is running for president? This is so crazy. This is so crazy. Yes, he, he, y'all can't wait to vote for him. She said, I just left as fast as I could. That was it, she added. I told very few people that we actually had sex because I felt ashamed that I didn't stop it. She told the jury. On why she continued to meet with Trump following their alleged sexual affair, I wanted to maintain that sort of relationship because the chance to be on The Apprentice was still up in the air. It would have been a great thing. So she wanted to, and and here's the thing. Men and women do this kind of stuff all the time. You're going to hear a lot of things like this about Diddy, right? You're going to hear a lot of things about this 
uh, from other people, right? People on, on what they call the casting couch, right? People doing uh, uh, something strange for some change or for some notoriety or for a job, whatever. Monica Lewinsky, there's others. Trump's not the only one, but this just looks crazy. She wanted to be on The Apprentice. She wanted to, as a lot of women and men do, want to see what they can get out of this relationship. Now, Judge uh, Juan Michon did deny the defense's motion for a mistrial. After a lunch break, there was a motion to declare a mistrial on the grounds that Daniel's testimony had been, (laughs) you know, of course, it didn't make Donald Trump look good. It didn't make Donald Trump look good. And uh, very similar to the way that Jerry Jones tries to do the job of his coach and his general manager while he's the owner, Trump does the same thing. He is the defendant, but he tries to do the job or tell the attorneys what to do, like he knows what's best. So I'm sure they was, he was telling them, go ahead, she, she can't say that about me. Where, where, where? I'm a big Trump baby. So the judge denies the motion for a mistrial on the grounds that Stormy Daniels' testimony had, you know, I don't I don't quite understand why they thought that this was going to be granted. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense at all. Instructed prosecutors to keep her responses limited to the questions that were being asked. Because, you know, they asked one question, and then Stormy Daniels is just throwing them under, under the bus. Right? Give, give us some extra. Putting some extra sauce on it. Putting some extra sauce on it. There was a very testy, as you can imagine, cross-examination. Uh, defense attorney laid in to Stormy Daniels, laid in to the porn star, portraying uh, her as being vindictive to Donald Trump. As in the following exchange, um, the ju- uh, the uh, uh, defense attorney, Susan Necklace, is uh, Trump has a couple of attorneys. Susan Necklace is one of the attorneys. And it, do, it does make sense to have the lady, Susan Necklace, cross-examine Stormy Daniels. That makes sense. I get that. It does look better having a woman doing the cross-examination. So she starts off, am I correct that you hate President Trump? Stormy Daniels says, yes. Necklace says, and you want him to go to jail? Stormy Daniels says, I want him to be held accountable. Oh, yes. It was it was good. <laughs> uh, Susan Necklace, the attorney for Trump, seek to discredit Stormy Daniels. That is what the defense attorneys usually want to do. They want to try to discredit Trump's attorney, Susan Necklace, seized every opportunity to try to point out inconsistencies in the narrative that was delivered by Stormy Daniels. Of course. At one point, at one point in time, Susan Necklace accused Stormy Daniels of trying to sell her story to In Touch magazine in 2011. At the same time, she was threatening to sue the gossip website the dirty.com which had weeks earlier leaked the story of Stormy Daniels alleged affair with Donald Trump. This is in 2011 that she's talking about this. So, it's an attempt and it is something that makes sense. You know, you, you want to try to dirty up the witness. This is uh, somebody that's very damaging to Trump, helpful for the prosecution damaging for the defense. So Necklace accused Stormy Daniels of trying to sell her story 
to In Touch Magazine back in 2011. She also says, well, this is at the same time you were threatening to sue the gossip website, thedirty.com, which leaked the story. Necklace implied that these two motivations were contradictory. Now, I disagree because if she's trying to sell her story and a website is leaking the story she's trying to sell, that that's got that's a problem. Right? That's a problem, right? This this leak story gonna mess with my money. So yeah, of course she's gonna threaten to sue him. That that makes sense. Yeah, but um I don't know. Necklace, you know, homed in on a lot of things. Necklace says to Stormy Daniels, you denied having had sex with President Trump. Stormy says, right, because I was afraid. Necklace says, so you're telling In Touch Magazine that you did have sex with him, then the dirty.com you said that you didn't. Ooh, they got her there, right? Stormy says it was not the same time. Necklace says, you sure about that? Trump's attorney also pointed out a discrepancy in Daniel's 2018 book, full disclosure, if you remember. Uh, she did, Stormy Daniels, did write a book eventually about this encounter. In the book, Daniels wrote that in 2011, she attended an exercise class after being confronted by a man she said threatened her for speaking about having sex with Trump. On the stand, however, Daniels testified that she didn't attend the class because she was too shaken nbc news reported so inconsistencies aside do you believe stormy daniels had sex with donald trump do you believe that this porn star wanted to get on the apprentice so she did what she thought she needed to do do you believe that Necklace also pointed to the fact that after the alleged confrontation in 2011, where she was trying to go to the exercise class, Daniels testified she didn't tell her then boyfriend out of fear of upsetting him, yet she chose to share the story publicly in 2018 on uh, 60 Minutes during an interview with Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not gonna remember things that let's keep in mind this encounter happened in 2006. Real quickly, can you describe an encounter that you had in 2006? I mean, it's going you might be fuzzy with some of the details. You might be fuzzy with some of the details. I don't know. Your daughter's life was in jeopardy and you didn't tell her father, but you went to Anderson Cooper and decided to tell the world. Necklace press Stormy Daniels. So it is a uh, interesting, it is interesting back and forth. Uh, naturally, the defense is going to go after Stormy Daniels. And when Michael Cohen takes the stand, Oh, they're going to go after him hard, too. They're going to go after him real hard. Later on, Necklace pointed out or, or pointed to Stormy Daniels' past claims accusing former attorney Michael Cohen of hiring the man who threatened her in 2011. According to the reporters in the courtroom, Daniels acknowledged that she did suspect that Michael Cohen sent the man at the time but has since realized that he didn't. In the end, Susan Necklace sought to make the point that the only way for Stormy Daniels to monetize her story was to speak publicly about having sex 
with former President Trump. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So, I guess uh, about 4, 4.30-ish today, the judge dismissed the jury. Testimony is going to resume on Thursday. We know that Wednesdays they're off. <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> What kind of jury schedule is this? They get Wednesdays off. They get out at 4.30. I've seen cases in downtown Baltimore that just didn't go like this. Didn't go like this. So they're done for the day. Judge Juan Michon has put a cork in the proceedings. He told them, all right, jurors, let's call it a day. It was a very tense testimony with Stormy Daniels. That That is uh, definitely something that you know, it was tense, and it's going to be tense. Trump's attorney told the judge that her cross-examination of Stormy Daniels would continue on Thursday. So we can expect more fireworks, more sparks, more flames. Flames. What we have, folks, is dueling visions of events. Dueling versions of events. He's saying one thing, she's saying something else. The big picture here, the prosecution is using Stormy Daniels, uh, her testimony, to bolster, uh, bolster its claim that Trump broke the law when he falsified the business records to keep a story about his alleged affair with the porn star, from coming to light. And I'll say this, of all the crimes that he's done, of all the dumb deeds, this is this ranks really high. I mean, to me, taking the the classified documents, that was also dumb. But this is something, trying to cover up something that your supporters wouldn't have gave two craps about just strikes me as not being smart. Not being smart at all. So the defense is trying to cast Stormy Daniels as a liar who concocted the story to make money. The defense only needs one juror. They only need to get one juror that's like, I don't know if Trump really did this. They only need one. They only need one. So Stormy Daniels to return to the stand for more tense questioning on Thursday. And I'm very interested to see how that goes, how she holds up on Stan. Will she continue? Prosecutors are alleging that Trump paid to keep her quiet. The defense is saying she's just she's just a tramp trying to get some money. Trump denies having sex with her. Attorneys try unsuccessfully. To get a mistrial. Oh, this is this is interesting. This is interesting. This is the president of the United States. President of the United States. Let me know your thoughts. Do you believe Stormy Daniels? Do you believe Donald Trump? Is Donald Trump an innocent victim here? Let me know your thoughts. Of course, all social media at the Diamond K Show. Uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. So for folks in Baltimore, overnight construction will cause major highway delays in Baltimore County, according to officials. Now, the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration uh, is having some construction going on on I-95, right at at the 695 interchange. It's going to close several lanes. This is happening tomorrow. Several lane closures, detours. It's just going to be a mess. This is in that Arbutus area of Baltimore County. And, and this is what happens. They've been doing they've been doing construction for a long time. I guess they're they're widening the road. So this is nothing new, but a lot of times. It's not, they don't close it, and then they do close it. If you forget and get on there, you get detoured, you're trying to go downtown, something like that, it is uh, is not cool. 
the detour because the detour is real wacky the way they do it. Anyway, tomorrow, May the 8th, a single lane will close on the southbound I-95 at 7 p.m. Two lanes will close at 9 p.m. and three lanes uh, will close at midnight. Uh, It's just going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Now, I've been talking about this, and I'm going to be talking about this, the potholes in Baltimore City. How we can fix them. Because clearly, the mayor, the city council, maybe they, maybe they just maybe they take helicopters. <laughs> maybe they don't see the roads, uh, but the roads are a mess. And sadly, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. We, if we're sitting waiting for a magical politician. They're just going to come and fix all of the city's problems or, or all of the state's problems or all of the country's problems. You're going to be waiting for a long time because all they want to do is get in office. That's it. They want to get in office, and when they get in office, they're going to forget everything that they told you. They're going to forget everything that they told you. Right now, I see more road work being done on the shabbiest streets. Like, I see a lot of work being done. It, you know, put me in these weird one lanes. I got this raggedy bike lane over here. Stop, start, all that kind of stuff. But the roads still look like crap. I don't even know. What is happening? I don't even see the progress. Maybe maybe it's me. But I'm talking about Baltimore City. Early voting is underway for Maryland's 2024 primary election. The roads are still crap. Maybe Baltimore City has a a tax on all of the auto repair shops in the city. And maybe they're getting some kickback from that. And that's why they won't fix fix the roads. We got to hold these folks accountable. I'm going to be putting something together. and I'm going to be announcing it real soon. I'm still trying to work out the details. But we're going to start. We're going to get this together. Let me say that. We're going to get this together. I have some ideas and uh, because we've s- sat back and hoped that our tax dollars were going to go to the right place. City council is in charge of the money. And uh, I talked about this the other day and let me see if I can. Okay. So who is in charge of this? There is a maintenance division a maintenance division and the maintenance division is part of DOT, the Baltimore city department of transportation, the Baltimore city department of transportation has a maintenance division. The maintenance division is comprised of several groups. One group is street lighting. Street Lighting Group oversees the installation, maintenance, and repair of all 80,000 street lights throughout Baltimore City. In addition, this group installs and maintains lighting and electrical services for city festivals, events, and departmental facilities. All right. Now, this is the maintenance division of the Department of Transportation. Now, what I want to focus on is the roadway maintenance. The roadway maintenance group maintains and preserves 2,000 miles of roads and 800 miles of alleys. This includes potholes, street repairs, curb repairs, and handicap, handicap ramps. This group also maintains right-of-ways, medians, and transportation properties. In addition, this group is responsible for the city's snow removal plans and the placement of maintenance salt boxes. So this roadway maintenance group is who handles this. They handle the roadways, and there are 2,000 miles of road in Baltimore City, 800 miles of alleys in Baltimore City. So potholes, street repairs, curb repairs, and 
handicap ramps are supposed to be handled by the roadway maintenance group, a division of DOT. So why is it that we have potholes that haven't been, I see, I've seen potholes for over four years in certain spots. Over four years. So what exactly does the maintenance division do? Because as I told you, the roadway maintenance, they handle and are supposed to maintain the streets, the alleys, right-of-ways, medians, and snow removal and salt boxes. We haven't been getting a lot of snow. We haven't been getting a lot of snow. Got a little bit here, a little bit of there. Salt boxes were still full. You know, it was a couple couple times, three, maybe three or four times this year we needed. What you doing the rest of the time? Roadway maintenance group? What are you doing as far as the 2,000 miles of road in Baltimore, Baltimore City? Supposed to be maintaining and preserving it. I don't see a lot of maintaining. I don't see a lot of preserving. I ain't even talking about the alleys, right? We can get to the alleys in a minute. I'm just talking about the roads. Under their purview, potholes, street repairs, curb repairs, handicap ramps. So what are they doing? Are they just milking the clock? Is the roadway maintenance group, do do y'all moonlight? Are y'all part of the bridge group? The bridge maintenance group? Now, the bridge maintenance group maintains the city's 300 bridges. So we got two drawbridges, 17 pedestrian bridges. Does the roadway maintenance group, are they also the bridge maintenance group? No, they're not. There's a facility maintenance group. There's an inner harbor maintenance. Oh, the inner harbor maintenance group. Dumb bammers need to be fired. Okay, the, the, the harbor looks like crap. The harbor looks like crap. So I can only assume that these folks are just milking the clock. Right? They're just milking the clock because they're not repairing nothing. So early voting is underway. Whoever the next mayor Whoever that person is, he or she, we're going to have to have a conversation. And uh, all of these uh, top tier candidates, I've talked to them before. And we're going to talk again. And we're going to put pressure on whoever the mayor is, he or she. Because the roads in Baltimore City, and it may seem like a small thing. And I know I'm spending a lot of time on it, but I think it's a major thing. And and let me tell you why. The way that the city looks will reflect on how the citizens act. So we got trash everywhere. The roads are crazy. These things are greatly affected and can be changed. But it takes effort. Uh, It takes effort. And if we don't hold these folks accountable, if we don't get in the face of the city council, we don't get in the face of the mayor, they're not going to feel the pressure to do it. They get elected. They say, oh, yeah, we're going to look into that. Yes, we need to do this. And she'll just go say, yeah, you need to call 311, a 411, a 711, 911, right? They're going to say all that kind of stuff. Sounds really, really good. Then they get in the office and they forget about all the stuff that they said. And then we just sit sit home and complain about it, but we don't hold them accountable. Now, what does hold them accountable mean? You may say, how do we hold them accountable? How do we hold the mayor? How do we hold city council accountable for doing the things that we really need? Because here's the thing. This is one of the things that really frustrates me about government. 
government takes our money, spends it on what they want to spend it on. We got to beg and please. Can you please spend our money on the stuff that we want to spend it on? No, no. We know what's best. Can you please do this? No, no, no. We're going to get the uh, 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 40 bike lanes. No, no. Can you just fix the roads? Oh, no, no. We're going to get you a million trash cans. Can you please fix it? Like, we want the roads fixed, right? But, you know, they're not understanding what we're saying. So we got to put more pressure. We have to put more pressure. And once this election is done, once this, once this primary is done, as it relates to uh, Baltimore, uh, when the primary is done, that's who the mayor is going to be. I don't think that the Republican candidate is going to be able to uh, take over whoever the Democrat uh, that wins the primary is. But when the election season is over, so we said when the general election is over, we're going to start putting pressure on these folks. Uh, we're going to have to. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Otherwise, the streets are going to continue to look the way they look. Now, there is some personal responsibility that's going to need to be there because trash is part of this, right? But potholes is immediate. That's like my super main goal. But trash is part of it. Now, trash pickup, that is one thing, right? That's one thing. But we also got to stop throwing trash on the damn ground. How many times have you been in a car and you see somebody driving and throwing some stuff out the window? What is this about? Where does this come from? Where does this come from? I don't I don't get it. Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? People are throwing trash literally out the window of the car. Yo, it's crazy. Like no home training or nothing. Now, look, I get mad at politicians, but this part is on us. Why are we throwing stuff out the window? Why are you walking down the street and you're just throwing something on the ground? I don't see a trash can. Hold it till you get to a trash can. Ain't that hard. But if we are not respecting where we live, right? Or, you know, and, and I don't mean it don't have to be on your block, right? This is our community. This is our city. So, so if you walk in somewhere else, I'm, when I say where you live, and that, that's not where your house is per se, the everywhere in the city is where you live. That's what I mean. So they, the politicians, feel as though it's not a big deal for them. They don't care about the trash. Trash piles up, whatever. So they're like, we ain't fixing the roads. They don't even care about the roads. Right? That's what they think. thinking. We ain't got to worry about that. We can take their tax money and put it on this and put it on this. And, and, and that's how we get a city that looks crazy. So it's not only politicians. They're a big part of it. They most of it, but they not all of it. So parents, stop raising your kids to see you throwing stuff, trash on the ground, because they imitating you. And parents, yo, chill. We could do better. We could do better. Politicians can do better as well, but we need to do better also. So it's not just them, it's a us thing. Now, we're going to we're going to do some some stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to be putting pressure on whoever the mayor is, whoever the president of city council is. Pressure is coming, fam. I'm telling you, pressure is coming. Uh, let me know your thoughts, of course, in the comment section on all social media at the Diamond K Show, uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. As I said, early voting underway. Uh, I definitely want you to uh, participate. Cash your vote. Whoever it is, I don't care who it is, just cash your vote participate in the process because this is all part of the bigger picture. This is all part of the bigger picture. We have to participate to get the things that we want demand. It's our tax money. It's our tax money. We must hold them accountable. Otherwise we can't just give them the money and just say, do whatever you want with it. Do with our money as you wish. We got to tell them we have, we have to demand things. And then if they don't live up to what we say, what we want, then we get them out of there. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Let me know your thoughts. Of course, I'll be back here tomorrow at the Diamond K Show on all social media, uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. This was a, this was a fun one. This, this is a memorable show right here. <laughs> this, is a, this is a good one. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you guys tomorrow.